my friend! How fortuitous to run into you in this most intoxicating place! I'd offer you a drink, but uh, for some reason the workers won't let me borrow any of their wine, cheapskates. You know, I once started my own wine business on course. It uh, hit a bit of a snag when my investors, three brothers calling themselves the Cerberos, suddenly lost faith in me. But after they had a tragic run-in with a bloodthirsty Mystios, I was able to land on my feet. From then on, the streets of Kos overflowed with wine, and my purse overflowed with drag me. Very sad about the Cerberus, though. Couldn't have happened to nicer people. Why, I'm Marcos, of course, one of the most successful merchants in all of Greece. You really haven't heard of me? My name is known from Kefalonia to Kos. If you've ever paid money for something, I probably received a percentage. But enough about me. Let's go back to what you're doing here. As you can probably tell by all the grapes, this is one of Greece's many vineyards. Wine was an essential part of Greek culture, and this tour will take you through how it was made. In addition to being delicious, not to mention lucrative, wine was an important part of Greek economy. I promise I'll meet you at the end of your visit, my friend. See you soon! Winemaking dates back to the 4th or 3rd millennium BCE. It became widespread in Greece during the Bronze Age, and within centuries the Greeks had refined it further. The first step in the process was always harvesting, where grapes grown on rows of vines were collected by vineyard workers. According to Homer, harvesting was often accompanied by music to give it a more festive atmosphere. Ancient Greek wine mainly came in three different varieties, Osteros, Glucotion, and Autocratos. It could be flavored with spices, herbs, resin, and even perfume. It was also much stronger than modern wine, with an alcohol percentage of approximately 16%. Because of this, the drink was mixed with water to make it more palatable. Grapes were dried to maximize the wine's sweetness and prevent it from turning into vinegar. In most vineyards, the drying process involved laying the grapes out on the ground under the heat of the sun, then covering them at night to protect them from accumulating dew. According to Hesiod's poem, Works in Days, the ideal time to dry grapes was 10 days and 10 nights. When they were finally completely dried, the grapes were collected in jars, just as they are today. The Greeks had many methods for crushing the harvested grapes. The most common technique was to use a lenos, a large treading vat where workers stomped on grapes with their feet. Alternatively, the Greeks sometimes crushed the grapes by hand using a strainer, mashed them with a mortar and pestle, or squeezed them using a tool called a sack press. <laughs> After the grapes were pressed, the resulting juice was poured into large containers called pithoi, where it fermented. Once fully fermented, the wine was filtered through an ethmos, or sack, which separated it from the residual yeast called lees. The wine was then placed in a special storage room. The room was half buried to keep it dry and maintain a consistent temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. These measures ensured the wine wouldn't lose any of its quality before being shipped to market. When the wine was ready to ship, it was poured into storage containers called amphoras. These were smaller than pithoi, which made them easier to ship and display in crowded marketplaces. However, that doesn't mean transporting wine was always a safe endeavor. Sometimes ships carrying amphoras as cargo would be wrecked before making it to their destination, losing hundreds of bottles of wine to the sea. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, oh, my friend, are you? I hope you enjoyed yourself learning about all the picking, stomping, and bottling that goes into making Greece's favorite beverage. Maybe if my customers understood how hard winemaking was, they'd agree more with my perfectly reasonable prices. But let's talk about something else, yes? What else can I do for you? You want your intelligence tested? Well, let me tell you, my friend, no one is more qualified for that task than me. Let's get started. What container was used to ship wine to the market? No, pithy were the big containers with the juice fermented into wine. But I'm fond of second, third, even fourth chances. So try another answer. Yes, wine was stored in Amphoris during its long journey to market. Here's another question. Which of the following wasn't a type of wine variety? Correct! Thassos was an island famous for its vineyards. Not a specific type of wine. Just one more question to go, my friend. Which part of the winemaking process created the grape juice necessary for wine? No, the wine was only shipped when it was fully fermented, filtered, and flavored. Try again! Harvesting grapes was actually the first step. Try a different answer. That's the one. The harvested grapes were pressed in a linos, often by the feet of vineyard workers. Just try not to think about that last part whenever you have a cup of wine. You know your wine. You're as good with facts as I am with money. And that's really saying something. If you say so, my friend, I hope we see each other again soon.